How did you meet the love of your life? Story 1. A mutual friend set us up after we were both just out of relationships that summer. We were 17. We hadn't a clue what to say to each other when we met, but it just worked and it was wonderful. We talked about everything and anything and we quickly fell in love. We talked to each other every day and I trusted her with everything. She trusted me with everything. She was my world. I love her more and more every day. We spent two amazing years together, two amazing years I'd truly give anything to go back to. We made the world okay for each other. She passed away just over a year ago in a car accident. No one was to blame for it, but she's gone now. My life with her and the people were involved disappeared and don't seem to be interested in my well-being at all. Except for the wonderful person who set us up, she's been an amzing friend. But the love of my life passed away and my life feels so empty without her. I know I'll find love again someday and that too will be wonderful. But the love of my life will always be her because she was there for me when I needed it most and it took death to take her from me. Wherever I go, I'm taking her with me in spirit. Story 2. I was hiking up the mountain with a group of friends, 3M3F, so even ratio. He was hiking alone with his St. Bernard. My great Pyrenees wasn't with me BC. She was too old for that difficult of a hike. But seeing as I am a fellow big dog lover and owner, I ran up to pet his dog. I said, he's still a puppy, isn't he? He responded, yeah, how'd you know that? I said, his hips are still taller than his shoulders. Small talk, and then we part ways to continue our climbs. He continues down. We continue up. My friend asks me why I didn't ask him out. About five minutes later, I turn around and race after him. I somehow catch him and gracefully suggest a dog date, if he doesn't have a sitch, of course. He immediately says yes and asks for my number. Every year, we spend our anniversary on the same hike. Thankfully, the dogs fell in love as fast as we did, too. Edit. Two years, got a house together, another St. Bernard, and we've made it to the top of ten mountains together. Oh, and he beat cancer. We're very fortunate. Edit 2. Thank you for the kind responses and gold. It made my day. Story 3. I am actually marrying her today after seven years of being together, but we first met at work in a restaurant. I was a sous chef at the time and she was the hostess. We had an open line kitchen and the hostess desk was about ten yards or so away. To get her attention when it was slow, I would throw random small things at her across the line. But the day I fell in love with her, it had snowed and she had come over to my place for the first time. We ended up having a snowball fight and wrestling in the snow. Afterwards, to get warm, we snuggled inside, and I knew in my heart I loved this goofy, gorgeous woman. Edit. Thanks, everyone, for the kind words. The wife and I both appreciate it. I had posted this yesterday long before the wedding and was blown away by the response when I checked today. We had an awesome day. Also, thanks for the gold strangers. Story 4. Really weird story, but all my friends find it funny as it's such a me thing to do. I went to one of my works nights out at a local bowling place. I kept glancing over at this gorgeous girl over in the other lane and occasionally noticing her glancing back. After about half an hour of debating with myself, I decided to just go over and speak to her. Because what's the worst that can happen, right? So I walk over and start speaking to her usual flirty stuff, and I feel we hit it off nicely. So confidently, I walk back to my lane and continue the night as normal and end up home. A sudden fear hits the back of my head that I didn't give her my name, number, or any means of contacting me. I blew it! So I go to sleep and wake up the next morning to discover a Facebook friend request from the girl. So I obviously accept and message her the usual formalities and then ask the glaring question, how did you get my name? Her reply was, you yelled, that's how, insert my full name, does it you mother after getting a strike. I've never both hated and loved myself so much for that moment. But it worked out. We've been together in a long distance relationship for two years and it's safe to say I'm in love. Edit, wow, you guys have actually made my entire day. I never expected anyone to care about my soppy little story, but thank you so much. You've blown me away. Also, whoever stole my Reddit gold virginity, I love you. Day made guys, thanks for reading. Remember to always yell your name after important events. Story 5. While traveling in Europe, I met a female version of myself in a bar. She was also American, but she was from the Midwest and I was from the East Coast. It was nice to hear another American voice. And the more we talked, the more we realized we liked all the same things. We became traveling buddies and decided to have a summer fling, but it quickly became much more than that. As our time together came close to ending, we had a choice to make, and we both made the same one. I had recently sworn off long-distance relationships, but I knew that if I didn't stay in touch with this girl, I would always wonder what might have been. We dated long-distance for the rest of college, seeing each other a couple times a year, relocated to the same city after graduating, and did the only thing you can do when two people start so similar. We grew apart. No hard feelings or drama, we just both realized it was done and we needed to move on. I'm with another woman now in a relationship I recognize as much stronger than my fling, but I still think about it, and as is natural, 
I wonder what might have been if we had been 10 years older instead of young and idealistic college students. Story 6. Five years old, an older guy offered to teach me how to surf. I was hooked, and I found a surfboard in the trash, and he offered to fix it for me over the winter. Flash forward some time, and my parents separated, and I took it pretty hard. Bill, who taught me to surf, and his wife took me in, basically. Spent holidays with them and traveled to visit them a ton. Summer before college, I meet their niece, and we hit it off and spent the whole day. We were together hanging out, and then we went off to college. Didn't speak for a whole year. Next summer, we meet again. Hit it off really well and spent the whole summer being goofy kids summer love thing. Fall comes around and I go off to college two hours from her. We keep driving to see each other all the time. Flash forward six years and we're married. I still stay in touch with her uncle and surf all the time. Learning to surf as a little kid and a summer crush ended up with us getting married many years later. Story 7. I don't have some uber romantic story about how I met my husband. The only remarkable thing about it is that we lived a block away from each other for six years. My sister and her, then boyfriend, both knew him, and we never bumped into each other. So one day my sister was going bowling with some friends and asked if I wanted to come along. I was just coming off a terrible bronchial infection and had lost some weight so I was rail thin. And I went with her without changing into decent clothes or wearing any makeup. He was there and that's how we met. He told me later he thought I was cute, so I guess he really liked my real self, since there's no way I looked cute that day. That was in 1999, and here we are. Story 8. TLDR. I met my current wife by selling her a Nintendo Wii that I won in a ticket raffle, involving thousands of other possible winners. She and I had mutual friends in high school. We became friends on Facebook, but we had never met, and honestly, I don't ever remember accepting her friend request. Fast forward one and a half years and I go to college. At a block party, I won a Nintendo Wii in a huge ticket raffle involving thousands of other students that entered to win. I put the Wii on Facebook for sale and she replies, saying that she's interested in buying it, but for $20 less than I had proposed. I agree to her offered price, but only if she goes on a basketball date with me. She's 6'6 six, six inches, and I'm 6'5 A. At the night of our b-ball date, we end up not even playing basketball, but rather talk about anything and everything for hours. Needless to say, we hit it off really well. We married four years later. Story 9. He was friends with my brother, and I was the tag-along who joined them and another guy on a road trip to San Diego for Comic Con. The first time he talked to me, we were sitting in front of my brother's condo, and he offered me a fry as we waited for my brother to plan the trip. Not long later, we went to a concert with my brother. The new, if anyone is curious. And while I went to the bathroom, my brother and their friend ran off to find people leaving him politely waiting for me outside the bathroom for me. He stood by me for the whole concert, and we may have said one or two things to each other the whole night. He calls this our unofficial first date. Skip forward to the road trip, and he barely says anything to me for the first three days. When we get to Vegas, he starts talking to me more because my brother has sore feet and doesn't want to do much. At some point, he asked me if I'd like to go see Shrek 4 with him because no one wanted to go with him. Wasn't sure if he was asking me out of not. He claims he wasn't. By the time we got to San Diego, we were chatting a lot, but still not sure if it was friendship or something more. On our last day there, we went for a long walk and he bought me a beer. Then we went to the zoo where he bought me more beer. In a drunken stumble while trying to be sneaky, we held each other's hands and have been together ever since. That was six years ago. We got married two and a half years ago, and I'm currently cuddling our six-month-old daughter. Story 10. I had just broken up with a long-term boyfriend in high school, and one of my male friends pestered me for days to get out of the house and hang out with him. For days, I said no, but finally agreed when he asked me to go to this house party. I clarified repeatedly we were going as just friends. Just friends. We get to the party as it's dying down. The host is there and is just gone. I've never met someone I was more repulsed by in my life. I get up and walk across the room to get away from my increasingly clingy friend, and the host stops me and kisses my hand. I look annoyed. He knows I'm annoyed. And he apologizes and tells me that he's sorry, but I'm just so beautiful that he had to. What would it take for me to be able to kiss you again? Me, trying to get him to go away. If you let me kick you in the nuts, how about that? And he agreed, quickly takes my hand and kisses it. And I nail him in the goods. It was just so ridiculous I couldn't help but laugh. We've been together for nearly 11 years now. Story 11. This will get buried, but what the hell? My partner and I met on OkCupid, okay but it's still kind of a cute story. I guess I was getting sick of OkCupid okay because it had upsetting broken me. Just bad date after bad date. Pervy messages piling up. I was logging on to delete my profile, but decided to use up my very last alarms to give and do one final inbox check. The message at the top was from my partner. It was pretty bland and complimented me about my passion for video games way too much. I was immediately defensive and irritated and started writing this really salty message saying I wasn't interested. As I go to send it, something stops me. 
I suddenly felt like this poor person, whoever he was, didn't deserve the vitriolic message I was writing. All that anger was at the stupid jerks asking me to alarms in the first message. He didn't write anything like that, so I should be nice and just try talking to him. By the second message, he asked me out, and I was still unsure, so I decided I wanted to end the conversation politely. I have Crohn's disease, and I struggle to cope with restaurant dates, which he had invited me to. So I figured I would just scare him off by oversharing about it and just laying it all on the line. After a couple of minutes, he messaged me back asking if I was his friend pranking him somehow. I told him I didn't understand. Why would I be his friend pranking him? It turns out he has IBD too, and he had been telling his friend how nervous he was about bringing it up with prospective dates. A small part of him felt like it was too big a coincidence to be anyone else. After that, I kind of felt obligated to meet him. I'd never been on a date with anyone who understood me that well, and often boyfriends have rolled their eyes at me because they haven't understood my struggles. We arranged to hang out at my place even though it is against all the rules of online dating. I get so nervous on dates it tends to trigger my illness, so he made it really easy for me to manage that by being at home. We just made sure people knew what was happening and had several check-in times with friends set up. We talked on the phone every night for about six hours until we finally met in person. As soon as I opened the door, we both sighed in relief knowing we both looked like our pictures, and I kissed him. We've been pretty much inseparable ever since and hope to get married in the next year or two. On our first date, he taught me to play Hearthstone, and for our anniversary, I made him a custom Hearthstone card to thank him for being so wonderful and making my life so much better. Story 12. In a foursome when I was 15. It was New Year's Eve in 2006 and my friends and I were wasted. My more sexually advanced friend suggested she invite over a male friend that took her virginity and he could do stuff to all of us. Sure enough, he came over and we all fooled around, but I didn't sleep with him. On my 16th birthday, I was once again wasted and I was upset because my boyfriend had just broken up with me. So I decide that I must get revenge and sleep with someone else. The only person I know who would sneak over my house at 3 a.m. is of course the same kid who came over for the foursome. So I call him up. The only time I had ever seen him before was the foursome. He came over, snuck in the back door, the actual back door, and took my virginity on my couch. It was not very romantic, but I never minded. In the years to come, it was just a crazy story to tell. I never thought I'd see him again. So as you can tell, I was a pretty troubled teenager, and it only got worse. I eventually got hooked on heroin, had to drop out of college, went to rehab five times, and was homeless. The last time I went to rehab, I didn't really want to get clean after I came out. I went on FB, and I never use FB, to see if I could convince some old friends to help me get high when I see that good old four, some boy, had messaged me. We began to chat, and I was surprised that he even remembered me. He said to me, I always thought about you throughout the years. I knew you were a little troubled when we met, and I always wondered if you were okay. I thought it was so sweet. So we met, hung out, and fell madly in love with each other. I always assumed he was just a dumb, pretty boy who was only good for a booty call. But as it turns out, he is the most amazingly smart, kind, and funny man I have ever met. We live together now, have a puppy, and I have been clean for many years now. He treats me like a queen and has taught me so much about how to be a good person. I have never been happier, and I never thought my life could ever be filled with so much joy and love. I have a great job, and we are talking about getting engaged soon. He saved my life. It's funny how things work out sometimes. Story 13. I was working as a night guard on campus. I was 21. She was 18. It was the week before school started, so the only people in the dorm were RAs, staff, and a small smattering of students on campus early due to band or football or whatnot. She and her roommate were in the band and came down at 5 o'clock to take out the trash before going for a swim before band camp. No AC August in Ohio. I was sweaty and tired and frankly kind of gross at that hour. Her roommate made a comment about the creepy guy at the desk. She replied, Oh, I don't think he's creepy. I just think he's tired. I never heard that conversation and don't remember meeting her that way. I remember walking behind a girl with a great butt and amazing copper highlights in her brunette hair. Story 14. We were 17. It was actually 10 years ago today that this happened. March 26, 2006. My best friend found a guy on Zanga and wanted to meet him at the movies. But she was nervous he'd be weird. So she took me too. Guy did the same thing with his friend. We all got there and sat down in the theater, and I joked to my friend that she should tell her date's friend to come sit by me for this scary movie. And she took me seriously. And he really did come sit by me. And then he made fun of my purse. And it was awesome. We had a great time, but he lived in a nearby town, and I was shy. So when we all left after the movie, I thought that was it. Two days later, he found me online through our friend's Zangas and I would me. Hey, it's you! And I knew exactly who he was, because my shy butt had already looked him up and gotten too scared to speak first. Our friends stopped talking after a couple of weeks, 
but he and I have been together ever since and are very happily married. Story 15. Oh, 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 I actually have a decent story here. Currently a sophomore in college, I met her friends when I was a sophomore in high school at a fine arts festival that a bunch of schools in the South Midwest go to in order to show off their arts programs. Like 60 schools, each one brings 50 or so kids, so it's a huge event. I was playing frisbee with my friends. Her friends came over to join in because they had time to defeat before one of them, we'll call her Jane, had a dance performance. My friend, let's name him Jack, hit it off with Jane, and after her performance they met up and made out for a while. He got her number. We went our separate ways fast forward to a couple weeks later. I'm at the zoo with friends and I run into Jack. He doesn't have a car and his mom had to leave the zoo to stop by her work to get something figured out or whatever. He joined us for a while until he was bored and asked if I could drive him to his mom's work, which was more or less on my way home, so I agreed. On the way, Jane texted him for the first time since the week of the arts festival, and they talked. He mentioned he was in the car with me. She asked who I was because she didn't remember me so witty. Old me told her I was an Abercrombie and Fitch model. I 110% was am not. She asked for proof. So I took my shirt off. We live in Oklahoma. It's standard attire to be driving shirtless in late spring summer. And he sent her a pic of my 130-pound, 6-foot-tall, cross-country bod. She laughed and said, no way you're a model. But her friends thought I was cute, so she sent Jack their numbers to give to me. I saved the number of who I thought was the cuter one to text her when I got home. Except I saved the wrong number and it was the other girl I wound up texting. Good thing though, because we hit it off and it turns out we're perfect for each other. We've been best friends in love basically since that weekend. I just find it crazy how so much had to line up in order for us to start talking. Both schools were at the festival. Her friend decided to defeat time by playing frisbee with us. Jane and Jack hit it off. Jack and I happened to be at the zoo. He happened to need a ride. Jane happened to text him. I happened to text the wrong number. To me, it just says someone up there really is doing his best to play matchmaker, and I'm so glad because I'm so happy with her. Story 16. I made an account just to post this because my story is something that would put lifetime to shame. The reason I have the love of my life is all thanks to his dog. We lived in the same apartment, complex, so it's possible we might have ran into each other at some point. But everything about how we met was almost like a Nicholas Sparks novel. I was coming back from the pool when all of a sudden this beautiful husky just starts running at me. Now, if you know anything about me, I upsetting love huskies. They are my favorite dog breed of all time. Well, I start trying to get this dog to come over to me since it has no leash. I'm afraid it might run into the street. Then... As soon as I'm about to grab him, this guy just starts booking it towards me and tackles this dog. When the guy starts to get up, the first thing I notice is he looks like the Greek god Apollo, and I know this guy can't be single. I introduce myself, and he does the same thanking me for helping get his balto, which just upsets me out because it's the exact name I had planned for when I get a husky. Well, talk a little bit more, and then he says he has to go because he has a vet apt. Well, while walking, I notice our apt are exactly the opposite from each other. Well, the next few days, I'm glued to my back door looking to see if he might be walking Jack. Every time I see him, I run out my door making sure I'm always looking as on fleek, did I use that right, as possible. What I then learned from this convo is that he went alone to my favorite band's concert the other day because no one would go with him. And I missed the concert because I couldn't find anyone to go with me. We both love Doctor Who, and the book I was reading when coming back from the pool is his favorite book and movie of all time. So after days of stalking him out my window, he finally asks me out. I knew that he was meant for me when he was waving goodbye and fell into his back door that wasn't closed all the way at the end of the night. Three years later, he's sitting across the couch from me redditing. Story 17. I met him through video games. Someone from a small clan in TF2 invited me, insisted because I was shy and afraid of meeting a big group, to hang out in a tiny chat party before they did a Halloween event, and he happened to be there. He thought I was very cute. I thought he was pretty charming, and we both found each other fun. We stayed up to like 4 a.m. doing game events and became good friends. Months later, he invited me to a concert while I was visiting his city, and I gave him a kiss on his forehead while we were waiting for it to start. He told me I'd promised him one for losing a game to him a month back, while very drunk. And I didn't really believe him, but it was a convenient excuse. He leaned in and kissed me, and the whole crowd around us disappeared. It's been more than four years of long distance with a lot of visits, but we're closing the gap hopefully next month. I can't wait to start the new adventure with my co-op partner for life.